as a politician, that's probably my job to think of the bigger picture. And what myself and Claire Daly met, Julian Assange, back in 2013 in the Ecuadorian embassy. And uh, like just about everyone here today, I'm sure, we believe that what's happening to him is a great injustice. But the big picture is that this case just isn't about Assange. His individual freedom rights are very important, and we shouldn't forget that. But we have to understand that the persecution of Assange is actually an attack on all of us. We need to see what's going on with Assange as part of something much bigger, a huge effort to roll back our rights and to dismantle democracy. It didn't start in the last year or two when Assange was arrested. It didn't even start 11 years ago when the states vowed to go after him. Uh, it started probably 20 years ago. What's happened to Assange in Belmarsh is part of a process when the war on terror originally began in probably with the attack on Afghanistan. The events of 9-11 and the US reaction to it have cast a dark shadow over the world in which we live in right now. Um, you could say that we're living in a bit of a shadow. Uh, it wasn't just the US and its allies that went to war. That would be bad enough. They said their wars were to spread democracy, but actually the war on terror was a war on democracy. Bush and Blair used the idea of terrorism to commit an assault on civil liberties and the rule of law. Their illegal war against the Iraqi people left international law and the international system in tatters. They made a mockery uh, out of human rights. They more or less legalized torture. Uh, they threw due process rights for terror suspects out the window. It was one thing after another. Indefinite detention without trial, extraordinary rendition, atrocities committed by the US military and its allies, illegal mass surveillance of the whole world, persecution of Muslim minorities at home and the destruction of Muslim majorities countries abroad. They wouldn't have been able to do what they're doing to Assange now without Bush and Blair's attack on the rule of law. One of the reasons Assange's legal battle is so difficult is because the UK's extradition treaty is so mad. There's no safeguards for the rights of people accused of anything by the US. And we wonder why. Well, Blair wanted to make it easier to strip British Muslim suspects of their rights and send them to America if it suited. Assange is a victim of the same war on terror laws. He did so much to oppose. The thing that has happened in the last 20 years could not have happened probably without this attack on democracy. The war in Iraq and Afghanistan were crimes against humanity. Those countries are still suffering from the consequence of those wars. And we actually visited Iraq for a week, only there two weeks ago. And uh, it is just horrific uh, what was done to millions of people in Iraq. And you wonder what for. They didn't even uh, ever even end. I mean, they gave birth to the new wars in Yemen, Pakistan, Somalia, Libya and Syria. There's been a crazy death toll, millions dead, and tens of millions displaced. Some of them have tried to come here to find peace into Europe. Uh, instead of welcoming them, uh, we're, we're building uh, higher borders and trying to keep them out. All of this shows that there's something really wrong with our societies. We're supposed to be democracies, but these things couldn't happen in a real democracy. In a democracy, powerful people are supposed to be accountable. They're not supposed to be able to lie and cheat and murder millions of people in illegal wars and get away with it. Real democracies are not capable of cruelty on a mass scale like what we've witnessed in the last 20 years. That's why Assange is part of this story. He was on the side of the rest of us. He wanted to fix this. Assange is a journalist. Journalism is supposed to be a huge part of democracy. It's supposed to hold people to account. It's supposed to hold power to account. Journalism is supposed to expose the lies of the powerful and it's supposed to prevent things like Iraq wars from happening. But as we all know, journalists in the mainstream media didn't stop the Iraq war from happening. They didn't expose the lies. In actual fact, they were cheerleaders for it. They cheered it on, and during the war, most journalists in the mainstream media didn't do their job. They didn't tell us about the war crimes. They helped the governments write their own propaganda for us instead. During the wars, the defense ministries developed the practice of embedded journalism. They put journalists in the units with American and British troops. Most mainstream journalists on the war were just government press releases. They were part of the problem. The public never saw the reality of what was really happening. The government was able to create the impression that by 2010, the wars had been successful and the public was largely apathetic to them. But Assange and WikiLeaks, they changed that. 
And they had an incredible impression and impact by their revelations. They did journalism the way it is supposed to be, exposing lies and holding power to account. WikiLeaks released thousands of documents on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. They showed thousands of war crimes. They showed secret assassination squads conducting raids on family homes and slaughtering civilians. They showed helicopter gunships opening up and indiscriminately massacring women and children from the air. They showed the systematic use of torture by Iraqi security forces and the Americans turned a blind eye. They revealed the location of undisclosed mass graves. They showed us how many people were really killed in the Iraq war. They showed us the prisoner records, the hundreds of people who have been kidnapped and renditioned and then left in Guantanamo Bay and loads of them passed through Shannon Airport, which the Irish government didn't want to know and turned a blind eye to as well. They showed us that the wars were really like and exposed the lies and propaganda that was coming from the mainstream media. The volume of revelations was incredible. Thousands of events. The incident in Isaki, north of Baghdad, where the US soldiers conducted a revenge attack on a village, forcing dozens of women and children, as young as five, to get down on their knees inside their house and then shooting them all in the back of the head. I mean, these soldiers who were now war criminals then called in an airstrike to destroy the evidence. I mean, how bad? I mean, when WikiLeaks documents on this act of savagery was published, the majority in the Iraq parliament voted to suspend immunity for U.S. troops. This eventually forced Obama to withdraw yeah. U.S. troops from Iraq in 2011. WikiLeaks did more in 2010 than almost anyone else in Western world to stop the war on terror, to stand up for its victims and to hold the criminals responsible for it accountable. The Afghanistan and Iraqi files changed the whole story of those wars. For the first time in years, the public could see what was going on, and opposition to the wars began to go up again. We wouldn't have this without Assange. It is what journalists are supposed to do. He acted as people are supposed to do in a democracy. That's why he's been punished. It's nothing to do with law. If they couldn't throw these charges at him, they'd have found other ones. It's not about law, it's about power. He stood up to power, and everyone saw that. So we're trying to crush him. And it's not just to punish him personally. It's a display. It's a show to everyone. That what, this is what happened to you if you stand up to power. It's one of the reasons the court case lasted in September was so powerful. The evidence that was heard showed clearly that this isn't a case about what science did or didn't do. This case is about whether we live in a democracy. This is why the ministry was blocking people and getting into the court. It's why the mainstream media is ignoring this case. They don't want anyone to see what this case is really about. I'll finish with Noam Chomsky's witness statement. I believe this statement is a very important historical document. It's about what I've been talking about, the bigger picture. The fact that it has been written at all shows how bad things have become. Someday, when all the science is free, children in school will read this statement and understand what it was all about. All of the mainstream media smears will be forgotten about. And everyone see clearly that Assange was the victim of a terrible injustice. Noam Chomsky wrote, in my view, Julian Assange, in courageously upholding political beliefs that most of us profess to share, has performed an enormous service to all the people in the world who treasure the values of freedom and democracy and who therefore demand the right to know what their elected representatives are doing. His actions in turn have led him to be treated in a cruel and intolerable manner. Listen, any journalist out there who thinks that, who pretends to even have an interest in democracy, if you ignore the case of Julian Assange, any lip service to democracy is a load of bollocks.